The following is a video tutorial for how to create a mini jack-o'-lantern fit for a tea light. To get started, we're going to create a sketch. I'm going to select this plane here on the top right side. Once in sketch mode, I'm going to start with a line across the bottom here, utilizing the origin. I'm going to put this out to the right at 0.5 inches. This is going to establish the base for my part. From there, I will then go up and establish the height for my part. We want our pumpkins around one to maybe one and a half inches tall. So I'm going to put this at 1.25 inches. Then we're going to use couple of lines here to create like a little stem feature. I'm going to go up just a little bit higher and you can really freeform this however you want and just create like a little stem cutout. Now to finish this off, we're going to utilize the spline feature here. So I'm going to use spline, fit point spline, click here, and then just kind of randomly organically place these anchor points all the way down here back to this point. Hit the check mark to finish. You'll notice then all of those anchor points highlight with these hanger bars that you can move around to actually further finesse how the shape will turn out to change how the spline will actually look. You can even then grab these anchor points and move them around so you really get to create like something that's unique and organic in a way. Uh, once you are satisfied with your shape, we're then going to finish sketch and revolve that. Revolve next, selecting my profile, and then selecting the axis as that center line there. Send that all the way around 360 degrees. The next step is going to be to hollow out the inside of our pumpkin shape here. And we're going to use, do that by using the shell feature. Shell can be found here in the modify panel in the drop down menu. When you click on shell, you'll notice here one of the default settings is tangent chain. We want to deselect that first. Uh, that's based on the type of shape that we're working with. So deselect tangent chain. I'm going to rotate to the bottom of the part. And I'm going to select our flat base that we have here. I'll then type in 0.1 to set the thickness. You'll notice if we take a peek inside the part, it's now completely hollow and all of the walls are set to basically 0.1 thickness. We have a hole at the bottom. This will allow our tea light to sit up inside of there and now illuminate the entire inside of our pumpkin. So that's how you get that part of it done. We'll say OK to that. And now I need to add some facial features to this. To do so, we're going to create a plane. I'm going to use offset plane. Select this top right plane here, same one that we selected before to get started, and then just drag a plane out in front here. One and a half inches is fine. Really just need it out in front of the part. Say OK. Create a sketch on that new plane. And now I want to divide this face in half. And we're going to use the mirror feature because typically you'd like to have your face be nice and mirrored and symmetrical. So. To do this, we're going to divide this in half. I'm going to grab the line tool, click here on the origin, go straight up from there, and just put a half line on there. It doesn't matter how tall, just going to cut the part in half. This is going to be my mirror line when I'm ready to do that. Next, just using whatever lines you're comfortable with, create the facial features that you're looking for. I'm just going to do like a little triangle eyeball here on the right side. I'll do half of a nose right up to that mirror line, that center line that we have going. And then I'll work on getting some nice crooked teeth in here. And again, this is where you can be creative and do something unique. Bring that all the way across and finish that there. Remember, if you're not happy with any of the placements, you can always go back and select an anchor point and move it around, slide it around, reposition things, delete a line, redraw a line depending on what you're trying to achieve. But now I'm ready for mirror. So mirror can be found here in the create panel. If you go down to the mirror option, it says, what objects do you want to mirror? I'm actually going to click and drag a box around this entire area to select all of those lines at once. And then the mirror line will be that center line. Once I've selected that, you can see it's kind of superimposing the left side of the screen now, the left side of our face. I'll say OK. And if you want, you can actually delete that mirror line. You're not going to need that anymore. 
now you have your face. Finish sketch. We're going to extrude that out into the part. Select all of my different shapes there and extrude that into the part. Really, you can kind of eyeball this one too. As long as it cuts halfway into the part, you know it's going to cut through the front face. Say OK. And that's really it. That's how you create your 3D shape. Now, we're going to be 3D printing these. And so the next step is going to be to first save this, of course. So save this as Jack O' Lantern, mini Jack O' Lantern. And please put your name on these as well. You're going to be sending me these files and it'll help a whole lot if you have your name on there. Mr. Zumo, for the example, and click save. And now you're going to export this. To export the part, you can go to File, Export, and check the different options here. For type, we want to do an STL file. So you might have to scroll down a little bit, grab the STL file, and then export that. It's going to take a minute to process, and then you're going to email me that file. Email me your STL file. I'll be able to put it into our 3D slicing software and prepare it for printing. In the meantime, if you're looking to have some more fun with your jack-o'-lantern here on screen, you can apply colors and do some different things with that as well. So using the appearance panel here, you can pull up appearances. And there's a whole library and you can search for different things by keyword. But you'll notice that if you search for orange or brown or black, some typical colors that you might want to incorporate on a, on a jack-o'-lantern like this, uh, they're not going to find them there in the software. Here you're seeing a custom color that I created, this orange plastic. And so I can show you how to create those materials as well. Uh, but certainly you can look through the library and see if there's options out there. If there's not a color that you're looking for, here's how you create one. You go to the Modify panel, and we want to go to Manage Materials. Once you're on this screen, you can see the three that I've recently created, a black plastic, a brown plastic, and an orange one. If I expand this screen out a little bit, uh, we can see those. And I'm going to now down here where you see this sphere and the plus symbol, this is where you can create a new material. Uh, typically, I just go for plastic, but there's different options. You can have different textures and some different reflections based on your option selection here. Uh, but plastic would be a fine for what we want to get, get going here today. Always change the name, set it to a, a specific color that you're looking to, to use. Since I already have some of these other ones, I'll just create a green plastic right now. And then for type, you'll see there's some options there that kind of change the look of the color. But then underneath color, if you select that, you can get the pick color screen. Or sorry, you can do different basic colors. You have this entire gamut of color rays here. And then, of course, if you have specific values, you can get specific RGB values online for certain colors that you're trying to create uh, and type those in and do it that way. But I'm just going to go for this green here. Eh, maybe this darker green. That looks pretty good. With that selected, say OK. It adds it to the object now here to this material selection again different features here for textures and things like that but i'm just going to say apply and okay and now i have another option another color in my material browser in my material library once you have all the colors you need you can then just go to this appearance panel search for that color and then you can actually drag it right into the part there are two options here for how you're applying those colors. You can do it to an entire body or a whole component or to certain faces. So I just did orange to the whole thing. Now, if I switch this to faces and let's say I go to black, I could, if I shoot to the inside here, do it to the entire inside face of the pumpkin. And now it gives it that a little bit of a depth perception. You can certainly do it to all of the interior walls here on your cutouts that might take a moment. Uh, I'm just going to switch over to brown real quick and apply that to the top of my stem and the walls of my stem. So that is pretty much everything that you can do with this project. Certainly have some fun with that. And again, remember to send me those STL files for 3D printing when you're ready. Hope you have some fun with this. Happy Halloween, everyone. Catch you next time.